Hi, welcome back to Godly Play. I'm so glad you could come be with me today because you know we're entering into a really different time of the year. You may have been noticing some things changing, some signs and symbols of a new season, the season of Advent. And if you watched last week, Miss Ella told you all about Advent, didn't she? Well, maybe not all about it, but some things about it. And we'll be telling you more each Sunday as we move towards Christmas. But first, we have to do Advent. So, let's get started. Today, I wanted to tell you a folk tale. That's a story that was written long, long ago. So long ago that we really don't even know who wrote the story. It's just been told from grandparent to parent to parent to child and on down through the years till now we have a story we're not really sure where it came from. So this is a traditional folk tale, but the one I'm gonna be telling you has been retold by a woman called Angela Elwell Hunt and these really cool illustrations by a man named Tim Yonke. And I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly either, but you can find the book for yourself and I hope you enjoy looking at the pictures as much as I do. So get your listening ears on, get comfortable, I know you can hardly see her down here, but Ellie's sitting next to me instead of behind me today because she's just decided that's where she wants to be. But she's ready for a story, and I hope you are too. So together, let's enjoy the tale of the three trees. To find the first page. Here we go. Once upon a time, upon a mountaintop, three little trees stood and dreamed of what they would become when they grew up. See the little trees at the top of the hill? All covered in sunshine. The first little tree looked up at the twinkling stars like diamonds above him. I want to hold treasure, he said. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones. I will be the most beautiful treasure chest in the world. Well, that's a nice dream, isn't it? And the second tree looked out at the small stream trickling by on its way to the ocean. I want to be a strong sailing ship, he said. I want to travel mighty waters and carry powerful kings. I'll be the strongest ship in the world. Well, the third little tree looked down into the valley below where there were busy men and busy women going about in the busy town. I don't want to leave this mountain at all, she said. I want to grow up and be so tall that when people look up at me, they will raise their eyes to heaven and think of God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. Well, that sounds like three mighty fine wishes or dreams, don't you think? Let's see what happens. Well, years passed and the rains came and the sun shone and the little trees grew tall. And one day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. Uh-oh. Well, the first cutter, woodcutter looked at the first tree and said, this tree is beautiful. It's perfect for me. And with a swoop of a shining ax, the first tree fell. Now I shall be made into a beautiful chest, thought the first tree. I shall hold wonderful treasure. Well, the second woodcutter looked at the second tree and said, this tree is strong. It's perfect for me. And with a swoop of his shining ax, the second tree fell. Now I shall sail the mighty waters, thought the second tree. I'll be a strong ship fit for kings. And the third tree felt her heart sink when the last look, woodcutter looked at her. She stood straight and tall and pointed bravely to heaven, but the woodcutter never even looked up. Any kind of tree will do for me, he muttered, and with a swoop of his ax, the third tree fell. Well, more time passed 
and the first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought him to a busy carpenter shop. And the carpenter, he wasn't thinking about treasure chest. Instead, his work-worn hands fashioned that tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold and was not filled with jewels. He was coated with sawdust and filled with hay. Hay meant to feed hungry farm animals. Well, more years passed and the second tree smiled when the woodcutter took him to a shipyard. But no mighty sailing ships were being made that day. Can you hear Ellie? She's objecting to the story. She's having a dream. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> Instead, the one strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat, too small and too weak to sail an ocean or a river. He was taken to a little lake. Every day he brought in loads of dead, smelly fish. And more time passed. And the third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams and just left her in a lumber yard. What happened? The once tall tree wondered. I know, Ellie's wondering too. All I ever wanted to do was stay on top of the mountain and point the way to God. Well, many nights and many days passed and the three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in the feed box. I wish I could make a cradle for him, her husband whispered. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight, starlight shone on the smooth and sturdy wood. This manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly, the first tree knew he was holding the greatest treasure in the world. Do you know what that treasure is? And more years passed. And one evening, a tired traveler and his friends crowded into the old fishing boat. The traveler fell asleep as the second tree quietly sailed out onto the lake. And soon a thundering storm rose up and the wind and the rain came and the little tree shuddered. He knew he didn't have the strength to carry so many passengers safely through all that wind and rain. The tired man awakened and he stood up, stretched out his hand, said peace. And the storm stopped as soon as it had begun. And suddenly, the second tree knew he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. And not too long after, one Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beams were yanked from the forgotten wood pile. She flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly and harsh and cruel. But three days later, on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, and the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the first tree beautiful. It had made the second tree strong. And every time people thought of the third tree, they would think of God. And that was better than being the tallest tree in the world. Wow, what a story. I wonder which tree you liked best. I wonder if you have any dreams about what you want to be when you grow up. I know I've had lots of dreams throughout my life and dreams that I had when I was young and a child, wondering and looking ahead into the future. 
So many dreams. You know, and dreams are wonderful, aren't they? And we also know that sometimes our dreams don't work out quite the way we planned. I know that's true for me. I'm actually a really good planner and not all my plans work out and not all of my dreams come true the way I thought they would. But like the little trees in the story, I've come to trust that God always knows what I need and God is always with me no matter what is going on or how my plans are going. God is right there with me, giving me strength and courage, loving me through everything, all my mistakes, through some of my sillier plans. And I know that when I make mistakes and mess up, and maybe I have dreams that maybe are a little selfish, I can give those up and I can give them up to God. And then God's love can make it better. Turn it into something I never even dreamed of. Usually when I let God steer me, the dreams that come to be realized are better than anything I ever could have think, thought of on my own. And I bet that's the way it'll be for you too. So when I tell you each Sunday or each day that you listen to these videos with me, to always remember your prayer time. What I'm talking about is share your dreams, share the thoughts and concerns of your heart and your ideas, your plans, and ask God to reveal his presence to you. God is always with you. God's love is right here in your heart, in everyone's heart. We just have to have eyes to see God's presence in everything in creation. So you can trust that, and I hope you will. And I hope you take time to have a feast day today with your family and share some of that love that God has placed in your heart. Let it come out in your hands and arms and have some good hugs, have lots of smiles and laughter, and enjoy this special time of the year as we get ready to celebrate and commemorate Christ's light coming into this world, God's love becoming enfleshed in the form of that little baby. So have a good day, have a good week. We're gonna have some more videos and things happening during this time of Advent. So I hope you will stay tuned and be watchful and see what we have, some surprises for you. I hope you'll enjoy them all. Until then, have a fantastic day and a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time. I love you. Bye.